Welcome to the best of first person episodes from Phantoms and Monsters. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. Yellow Eyed Glimmer Man Entity Observed by University of Florida Student. My name is Mallory, and I would like to share with you a terrifying experience I had back in 2002 while I was in college. Back then I was in my second year at the University of Florida, and was living in an apartment with a girlfriend of mine, also a fellow student in the city of Gainesville, Florida. We lived the typical college life. We went to class most of the time, studied, hung out with friends, and would attend the occasional party on the weekends. We were two broke college girls, so we didn't have the funds that a lot of our friends did. So when we had free time we would look for things to do that didn't cost much. We would go to the movies, bowl, go to flea markets, yard sales and hiking in some of the local parks. This was one of my favorite activities. I love the outdoors and it's great exercise. We had a dog named Toby. He was a golden retriever and has since passed away. But back then he was a great and loving dog who loved to hike with me. So we went a lot, probably like three times a week. Anyway, our favorite spot to hike was the Gainesville Hawthorne State Rail. It wasn't that far away and was like a 16-mile hike if you did the whole thing. We only did that like three times. Most of the time we would hike around five miles. It's a beautiful trail with lots of trees covered in Spanish moss, swamps and wildlife. The trails are paved and there are bridges, observation decks and loads of cool things to see. The woods are very thick and dense, once off trail you can only see about 35 yards into the woods. Well on this particular day me and Toby were about 4 miles into the trail. It was a weekday around 11 am, so there were very few people. At the time of our encounter there was no one around, just me and Toby. As we were walking, I was just looking around as we hiked, you know just looking for wildlife, enjoying the sun and mother nature and all of her beauty. When, all of a sudden Toby froze. He saw something, he just stood there with his ears perked up, his tail was sticking straight out, and he was staring into the trees. I assumed he saw some birds or something else in the trees. So I asked him, what do you see Toby? What is a boy? He didn't bark, but I could tell something had caught his attention. While he continued to stare, I started looking in the same direction as he was, trying to see what he was looking at. At this point Toby's demeanor started to change, his tail went from sticking straight out and now lower between his legs. He began to whimper a little and started pulling on the leash like he wanted out of there. I continued to look into the trees trying to spot whatever was scaring him, and that's when I saw it. It's very hard to describe, but this thing looked clear, but not quite. It was in the shape of a human meaning that it had a head, torso, two arms and two legs, but was see-through. The thing that stood out the most was the glowing yellow eyes. That was the only thing that wasn't clear. As crazy as it sounds, this thing looked like the alien in the Predator movies whenever it is cloaking itself. It was standing on a large tree branch hanging on by its right arm and was looking directly at me and Toby. It slowly began to crouch down and tried to hide behind the trunk of the tree. Like it noticed us noticing him. I don't know why I say him. I absolutely have no idea the sex of this strange creature. If that's what you want to call it. It tried to hide, like I said, but you could still see portions of it behind the tree. I was frozen, I was mesmerized by this thing. I was just staring at it trying to figure out what it was. I didn't want to take my eyes off of it in fear that I might lose sight of it. This thing was so damn camouflage. If I looked away, I might not be able to find it again. So I just stared, ignoring Toby and his whimpers. Then it moved, it swung through the trees effortlessly and made almost no sound. It would move to a few trees and then freeze, look back at us, I guess to determine if we were watching it or not. I got the feeling this thing did not want to be seen. It would move, then freeze, crouch down and put itself between us and the tree it was in. It would sit there for a few minutes and then move again. I wanted to follow it, but everything in my body said no. So I just watched it and it eventually disappeared into the forest. Toby and I jogged back to the car, and I never told anyone about what we saw. To this day I don't know what we witnessed. Was it an alien? Or was it something else? I don't know. I was scared the day it happened but at the same time elated. Toby and I went back there numerous times and I'm not going to lie, I hope to see it again, but never did. I thought that I was the only one who had this type of encounter until I heard you guys covering, the Glimmer Man. I saw it, I saw the Glimmer Man. I now tell anyone who will listen, of course some people think I'm crazy, but I don't care. I feel lucky that I got to have an experience with the paranormal, with the unknown. I think the universe is way more complex than we think, and that there are things out there we can't explain, and that's okay. I like it that way. Mallory.
Lumberman Witness by Georgia Deer Hunter. This is a strange encounter I had years ago in Georgia. Mind you I've only told my brother and wife about this encounter, and it took place 41 years ago. So here it is. It was the fall of 1978, deer season in particular. I live near a very small town called such as Georgia. It only has a population at that time of around 1,000 people. It's in the southeast end of the Chattahoochee National Forest. I'm an avid hunter, and I was hunting on public land in the National Forest just up the road from such as in an area called Cooper's Creek. I had scouted out the area during the summer, so late July early August. I knew where all of the game trails were, I knew where water was located, which happens to be a small creek known as Brian Creek. And I knew where all of the ridges and gaps were. I've hunted in and around this area for years and was very familiar with the area. Well when I finally located a good spot or at least a spot I thought would give me a good chance of a large buck, I set up my lock on tree stand in a tree about 12 feet off of the ground. I trimmed the branches to give me some shooting lanes, and basically was all set for deer season. Oh, I was hunting with a 12 gauge shotgun. Rifle hunting is not allowed in the area. So fast forward to early November. I had been hunting out of my tree stand about 6 times by the time this particular hunt happened. It was late afternoon, around 4.15pm. I wanted to get there earlier, but work held me up. We had hired this new kid named Ryan, and he was slowing me down all week. Anyway, this was a Friday, I finished up at work, jumped in my truck and headed out to my hunting spot. Now this was my normal routine for a Friday afternoon during deer season, and my wife knew that I would not be home until around 8.30pm, and even later if I bagged something. I parked my truck at the trailhead and started hiking into the woods to find my tree stand. The walk would take about 15 to 20 minutes. You want to walk pretty quickly but not run, you don't want to make too much noise moving through the woods, you don't want to spook any of the wildlife. As I was walking to my stand the first thing I noticed was how quiet it was. I mean it was very quiet. I didn't hear any of the normal chirping or singing birds, no insects, nothing and only a slight breeze. I thought it was a bit strange but continued on to my deer stand. I finally arrived and climbed up and settled in. Once I was comfortable, I jacked around into the chamber, put the safety on my shotgun and began surveying the surroundings. Looking for anything out of place. Sometimes deer bed down during the day, and you can spot their antlers above the tall grass and underbrush. As I was doing this, I began to have this ominous feeling that someone was watching me. I don't really know how to explain it, other than I had this deep feeling, deep within me, in my core, in my gut, something wasn't right. Well, I tried to ignore it for a while, telling myself to stop being such a coward. There's nothing out here but you, some deer hopefully, some squirrels, skunks and other little critters. As time passed the feeling only intensified, I kept looking at my watch, wondering how much time I had left until dusk. Should I leave early, I thought to myself. Of course not, a huge deer was probably only moments away. As I was sitting there arguing with myself, I caught movement to my right side in the trees. I slowly turned my head and began looking through the tree canopy, and that's when I saw it. This is the part that still gives me chills, even writing this now freaks me out because I honestly don't know what I saw. As I was staring into the trees I saw what looked like a large bodybuilder, but complete blurry moving through the trees. I could clearly see the outline of the figure, but the rest was blurry, like I couldn't focus on it. It looked like a clear gelatinous blob, but in the shape of a human, a large human. And whenever it would stop I completely lost sight of it. It blended into its background perfectly. I just watched it for what seemed like an eternity, but in actuality it was more like 15 minutes. It moved through the trees effortlessly like a monkey or squirrel. It never really looked at me while I was watching it, maybe it was before, and that's why I got the feeling someone was watching me, I don't know. It slowly moved off and I was scared, about my walk back to my truck. So, I waited for another 30 minutes, it was getting dark now, and I slowly climbed out of my stand. Once I had solid ground, I wasted no time. I sprinted all the way back to my truck. I jumped into the cab of my trusty Ford pickup truck, and my lungs were on fire. That was the farthest and fastest I've run since basic training back in 1967. I just sat there in my truck and tried to regain my breath. I drove home and said nothing to my wife or anyone else for a few weeks. As time passed I tried to convince myself that I imagined it all, that I dozed off in the stand and had some sort of dream. But I couldn't get the idea of that thing out of my head, so I broke down and told my wife over dinner one night. She just listened and said it was probably my imagination. I later told my brother who said something similar, along the same lines. I never told anyone else and I never hunted in those same woods again. 
I never even went back for the tree stand. It was only like $300, and I didn't want to go back there again, not for a measly $300 bucks. I took a break from hunting for about 10 years and then started up again, but never in that area. I still wonder what I saw that day. I have no rational explanation. Later in 1988 or so I saw the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Predator. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I jumped up and yelled at my wife, that's what I saw. That looks just like it. I don't know if the writer had a similar experience as mine, and that's what inspired him to make the Predator cloak the way it did in the movie, or perhaps he heard some other eyewitness account, but that's almost exactly what I saw in the woods in northern Georgia in the fall of 1978. Mind you, not the reptilian looking beast with lasers, but the cloak part. Like I stated previously, I thought I was alone until you did the episode on the Glimmer Man, and now realize that others have seen it too. I don't know if that makes me feel better or worse. Anyway, that's my story, James. This is Lon Strickler. If you like this program, it would help us if you would give it a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notification when we upload new first-person encounters. We have many more to come very soon. And by the way, if you have a suggestion or an experience of your own, please leave a comment.